بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم سينيور 1 ستودنتس اوف سينيور 1 تو ا نيو بايولوجي سيشن توداي ان شاء الله وي ار جوينج تو ستادي يونيت 4 ستارت توكينج اباوت كلاسيفيكيشن اوف ليفينج اورجانيزمز كلاسيفيكيشن اوف ليفينج اورجانيزمز ذا لاست يونيت ويل بي اميزينج ان شاء الله ويل انجوي ستادينج ات Uh, in this uh, unit, we have three lessons, Principles of Living Organisms Classification. Uh, chapter one, Principles of Living Organisms Classification. Chapter two, Modern Classification of Living Organisms. Chapter three, Kingdom Animal. So we have three lessons in this unit. Let's start uh, lesson one or chapter one, Principles of Classification of Living Organisms. You know that there is a big number of living organisms. If you look around, you can see big number of living organisms. Maybe big or small, maybe unicellular, maybe multicellular, maybe animals, maybe plants, maybe microorganisms. We can see a lot, a lot of living organisms. So the scientists think about classifying these living organisms into groups, similar groups, to make their study easier, to make their study easier. Like you are, you are in a library and there is hundreds and thousands of books. If you want to pick a biology book and there is no classification of the shelves or the cupboards, it is very hardly if the books are not arranged, not classified, it is very hard to find your book. But if there is every cupboard has a, a title or a, an address and every shelf has a title also, you can find your book easy. So classification is very important to make the study easier, to make the study easier. And classification of living organisms started from maybe thousands of years by the scientist or the philosopher called Aristotle. Aristotle Thales, from 2,300 years ago, he is considered the first one who classified living organisms into animals and plants. Classified the living organisms into animals and plants. And the classified animals into animals with red blood is called them red blooded animals and the animals without blood or bloodless animals. Also, he classified the plants into three groups according to their size, big trees, shrubs, the small trees, yani, and weeds, your know, grass, small plants, the big trees shrubs, small trees, and weeds or grass. So this is the way of classification used by Aristotle from hundreds of years, from maybe 1,000 to 1,300 years ago. But we come to, in the end, to the uh, modern classification, the way of classification. The new way of classification is called the modern classification. In this time, we depend on the modern classification in classifying living organisms. And in the modern classification, we have a very important uh, concept, which is called species. The concept species consists of a group of similar living organisms, similar in shape, similar in uh, characteristics. And they can reproduce and produce new individuals of the same kind, which also are fertile and also can reproduce to give birth and new living organisms with the same, of the same kind. This is the definition of species. So every living organism belongs to a species. Like humans belong to a species. Uh, monkeys belong to a species. Lions belong to species tigers, and so on. But some living organisms don't belong to a species. Why? We'll see now. 
there is a living organism called Tygon. Tygon is different from tiger and different from lion. Why? Tiger is a species. Lion is a species because he can reproduce and they give birth and new individuals and new fertile individuals. But the tigon is a mix between tiger and lion. A male tiger marry a female lion. Okay? The mating happens between a lion female and a tiger male. So we will have a tigon. A new baby will be not a lion and not a tiger. It is mixed between lion and the tiger. We call it tigon. The tigon is produced from this mating, mating between a lion female and a tiger male. But the tigon is not a species. Why tigon is not a species? Because it is a sterile. Akim. It cannot reproduce. Unable to reproduce, unable to mate and reproduce. So the tigon is not considered a species. Tigon is not considered a species. Also, there is another example for a living organism which cannot be considered a species. Mule. Mule or will bagn. Mule. We listen, uh, we heard about this name, mule, before. The mule is a, a produced from a mating between a male donkey and a female horse. Male donkey mate with a female horse and produce the mule. The mule, the mule is a sterile, cannot reproduce. The mule is a sterile. This is a figure of mule. It's unable to mate and produce new generation. So also we say the mule is not considered a species. But the donkey is a species, and the horse is a species, but the mule is not a species. Why the mule is not a species? Uh, if I ask you, give reason. The mule, the mule is, and the tiger is are not considered species. Because they are unable to a. Because a. They are unable to mate and produce new individuals. They are unable to produce new a individuals. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the definition of species. What is meant by species? And this is a very important definition. What is meant by a species? It is a group of individuals having similar morphological morphological characteristics. Similar in the shape. Morphology, yani shape. Morphological characteristics. Similar morphological characteristics. They can mate uh, and which, with each other and produce fertile individuals, fertile offspring. Produce fertile offspring similar to them so they can continue their species. So the definition of species is very important. What is meant by species? Can you tell me? Can you read? Is uh, a group of individuals yes. having yeah. similar, similar morphological characteristics uh, mate with each other and produce fertile offspring similar to them. Excellent. So this definition is very important. What is meant by species? Mule is not a species? Yes, mule is not a species. Tiger, uh, tigon is not a species. Yes, tiger, tigon is not a species. And there is another animal called ligon. Ligon and the tiger. Ligon, it is produced from the uh, male lion and the female tiger. But tigon from a male tiger and a female lion. We can see... Uh, we can watch a video about the tigon and the liger. We can watch a video about tigon and the liger.
Can you watch this video? And an average female tiger can stretch up to six feet, reaching roughly four to five hundred pounds. Yet in his lifetime, Hercules is expected to reach as long as 12 feet and weigh over a thousand pounds. The syndrome's called heterosis, or hybrid vigor. Hercules is a liger, which means his father is a lion and his mother is a tiger. Now this makes him a giant. He's almost uh, this a liger. This animal is a liger. Lion male and the tiger female produce the liger. Nine hundred pounds and twelve feet tall. It's very tall. Its body is very big. Oh, he's over. That fearless man is Dr. Bhagavan Antle, better known as Doc. And his feline friend, that's Hercules. Can you see? Its shape is not a lion and not a tiger. It mixed between lion and tiger. This is a lion. This is another animal. And there's a new king of the jungle. It's called a tigon, and you have to see it to believe it. Here's more. This is the tigon. This isn't some mythological creature. It's the Tigon, a half tiger and half lion hybrid. It was born just one day after Christmas at a wildlife park in eastern China. Don't confuse the Tigon with a liger. A Tigon is born from a male tiger and a lioness, while a liger is born from a male lion and a tigress. These hybrids are very rare. A liger's survival rate may reach one out. Amazing animal, but we cannot say they are a species. We cannot say they are a species. This is amazing animals, subhanAllah. Now we move to naming of living organisms. Uh, Carl Linnaeus was the first one who named the living organisms. He wanted to name the living organisms in a scientific name. And this scientific name can be used in all over the world. In all countries, we can use the name uh, used uh, for naming the living organisms. For example, the cat or the, the home cat. This cat has a name, scientific name. Called binomial naming. Binomial naming. The cat has two. Uh, the cat has two parts of the name. Has two parts divided into two parts. The first part is for genius, and it is written in capital letters. And the second part is a species, and it starts with a small letter. So the genius and the species. Genius starts with a capital letter. A species start with a small letter. And the uh, cat has a name which is called Pelis domesticus. The cat which live in the houses. The cat we can rise at home is called Pelis domesticus. This name comes from the Latin language. Pelis it is mean the cat in Latin, and domesticus means it live in the home, also in Latin. So this is the name of the cat which we can rise at home. The bino binomial name of the cat, which can be used in all over the world. Binomial name, which can be used in all over the world. Every country uses this name in the scientific researches and in the uh, universities and so on. This is a scientific name come from the Latin language. Why Linus choose the Latin language? This is a question. Latin language 
was used to be scientific language because its words has a bright meaning, one meaning only for each word. And in addition to this language is very old, no one speak it now. And this protected from any a change or modification. No one is talking by Latin language in these days. So this language is not being used nowadays. So Linus choose the Latin language because it is not exposed to modification or any change. So this is uh, the binomial name for each living organism divided into two parts, genus and species. The genus uh, in capital uh, beginning letter and species in a small beginning letter. After that, we have the taxonomic hierarchy. The taxonomic hierarchy or the building of uh, taxonomy in uh, levels, we can divide living organisms into levels from the bigger one to the smaller one. The bigger level, which is called seven, uh, there are seven levels. There are seven levels of classifying living organism, each group compressed list numbers of living organisms. The bigger one in the top and the smaller one in the bottom. The kingdom in the top. Kingdom is a big, big A unit. Include number of phyla. Phyla is a plural of phylum. The plural of phylum. So the kingdom, like this kingdom, Kingdom of Animalia. Kingdom Animalia contain large number of animals. Like you see here, bear, uh, whale, fish, butterfly, lion, uh, wild cat, and domestic cat. This is a big group called Kingdom. Kingdom Animalia. And this group, uh, this big group divided into small groups. One of the small groups are, which are called phylum, one of these phylum called chordata, phylum chordata, the animals which have backbone. Chordata means the animals which have backbone. This is a phylum. And the phylum consists of many classes. The phylum consists of many classes. Class mammalia, one of the phylum chordata. Class mammalia, one class of the phylum chordata. If you remove the fish, because the fish is not from mammalia, it doesn't give birth. Okay, we have now the mammals, only the mammals, which can give birth. This is a class. And each class can be divided into smaller groups. Each class also can be divided into smaller groups. The class is divided into what? The class is divided into orders. The order is the uh, divisions of the class like order carnivora order carnivora one order of the class mammalia order carnivora or the wild animals which eat meat carnivorous plants animals carnivorous animals the animals which eat meat only eat meat this is an order from class a mammalia and the class also uh, sorry, the order also is divided into families, many families. Family Philidi, family Philidi, one family of the order carnivora. Philidi or the big cats and the small cat, the cat family. The cat family include the tiger, the wild cat, the domestic cat. This is family of the cats. Lion also come the, in this family. Philidi is a family come from order carnivora. And each family also is divided into genera, number of genera. The genera is a plural of genus. For example, the family Philidi has a genus called Felis. The Felis or the cats, the genus of the cats, which include the wild cats and the domestic cats. This is the genus of cats. 
finally we come to the species which is the smallest unit of classification the cat which live at homes or which we can raise at home which has a species called domesticus finally the genus divided into many uh, many species this is the smallest unit of classification so we have seven a uh, levels of classification I start with kingdom phylum g a class order family genus finally species finally species this is number seven species is what we need the definition of species because it is a building unit of classification species is an interbreeding population the uh, the uh, is it is an interbreeding population population uh, a group of living organisms that can produce healthy, fertile offspring. They can mate and produce new offspring of the same species, of the same species. So the species is the building unit of modern classification. There is a species for cats, there is a species for, for dogs, there is a species for human. There is a species for from for fish and so on. In addition to the previously mentioned groups, there are other groups that intermediate between two successive groups. Yani kalam, yani between phylum, for we class between phylum, we class there is subphylum. But between class. Order there is, there is sub order. يعني ممكن أقسم الفايلم لسب فايلم وبعدين أروح للكلاس وممكن أقسم ال ال class لسب classes وبعدين أروح لل إيه لل order. يبقى مجموعات جوا المجموعات. Groups inside the group. Intermediate group. نروح لحاجة تانية اسمها dichotomous key. Dichotomous key أو المفتاح التصنيف. To describe a living organism by easy way. For the new studier, the new the study the new students or studying classification, we can use the dichotomous key to help the new students which study the scientist uh, the the classification for the first time. We use dichotomous key to help them in identifying living organisms. Dichotomous key is a series of descriptions. Ordered in pairs. Series of descriptions ordered in pairs that lead to identify an unknown living organism. The dichotomous key start with broad feature, the outside feature, then get more specified and more privacy whenever we go through. The level of the dichotomous key. Let's take an example. We have to take an example to understand this. The dichotomous key here, for example, to describe the butterfly. How to describe the butterfly? By the dichotomous key. For a new one who study classification, we say that there is a big group called insects. And this group, insects, can be divided into so two small groups with wings and without wings. Wingless have no wings, and winged they have wings. The wingless, like what, like the ant, has no wings. The winged can be divided into two groups: one pair of wings and two pairs of wings. We have here to use the dichotomous key: one pair and two pairs. Type. One pair of wings have two groups divided into two groups. With legs are shorter than the body, like the fly, and with legs are longer than the body, like the mosquito. And we say we are talking, and we need to describe what we need to describe the butterfly. So it is insect and it is winged, not wingless. It is winged. And uh, one pair or two pairs, it has two pairs. Finally. The insects which have two pairs, some of them have uh, wings covered with 
a bright scales and one has no bright scales or transparent wings. So the butterfly come in the group of a the uh, insects winged has has two pairs of wings and the wings are a bright scales have bright scales. Finally, we come to the moth or we come to the moth or the butterfly. So we can describe a living organism by a binary way by describing the outside characteristics. Then we go to inside more details and more details. Finally, we can reach the uh, the living organism which we can want uh, which we want to describe. This is an easy way of a description of a living organism. This is the uh, dichotomous key. Dichotomous key is a way of classification help to identify a living organism. Dichotomous key is a series of descriptions ordered in pairs that lead to identify a known living organism. Dichotomous key is designed to start with a broad feature, outside feature, then get more specified and more privacy whenever we go through the levels of the dichotomous key. Through each step, you can choose one of the two descriptions according to the characteristics of the living organism. By the end, you can uh, will reach to the description list to the living organism name or the group which it is belong to. This is a way, uh, an easy way of studying classification, the dichotomous key. And now we can go to uh, chapter two and we will discuss it in the next session in details, but we, we take a brief about it. A quick brief about the modern classification. Because we are studying modern classification in this time. The old classification made by Carlinius now is not used. Carlinius divide living organisms into two groups only. Animals kingdom and plants kingdom. From 100,000, uh, 1,700. Carlinius from 300 years ago divided uh, the, uh, the traditional classification system that classified the living organisms into co two kingdoms only, which are animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. But now, nowadays, no more use. The old classification or the traditional classification, it is uh, not used anymore. We use a new way of classification called the modern classification. Made by Robert Batiker, made by Robert Batiker in the year 1969. The Batiker, uh, the scientist Batiker, uh, classify living organism by a new way. He established a new system of classification called the modern classification or modern system of classification. He divide the living, he divide the living organisms into five kingdoms, not two kingdoms like uh, Carlinius. He divide living organisms into five kingdoms. Kingdom number one is called Monera. Albida'iyat. Kingdom number two is called Protesta. Attala'iyat. Kingdom number three, Fungi. Al-Fitriyat. Kingdom number four, Planty. Al-Nabat. Kingdom Animalia. al hayawan if I have in the modern classification five kingdoms, we will study them in details, inshallah, beginning from the next session. Uh, made by Vatican. Made by Vatican. He divide living organisms into five a kingdom. Five kingdoms. It is a conventional system in the scientific uh, scientific communities now it is now used common in more uh, in many countries in all countries you can say in all countries now they use the modern classification system there are some organisms only there are some organisms that are difficult 
to be classified according to Vatican classification, they are not belong to these five kingdoms. Yani there is some living organisms, not uh, from kingdom Monera, not from kingdom Protesta, not from Fungi, not from Blanti, not from Animalia. These living organisms have some characteristics of living organisms and some characteristics of non-living things, like the virus. The virus doesn't belong to any kingdom. So there is a new classification. We make virus as a, a, an independent kingdom and uh, with itself without, without putting it in any kingdom of uh, the five kingdoms. And viroids and virions. We have other living organisms like viruses, viroids, and brayons. These living organisms don't belong to any kingdom of the five kingdoms made by Robert Batiker. So uh, they are not classified in the modern classification, but there is in recent time, they make a new kingdom for these a living organisms because they have some characteristics of living organisms and some characteristics of non-living things. And uh, next session, inshallah, we'll discuss, discuss together Kingdom Monera and the Kingdom uh, Protesta, inshallah. This is our the end of our session today. Uh, thanks a lot for you joining this session. Until we meet again, uh, I hope you understand it. And I hope you uh, solve the exam I sent to you, inshallah. Uh, thank you and goodbye. Do you have any question, Rukaya? No. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you and goodbye. Salam alaikum.